السلام عليكم بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين I will summarize the most important results of the phase theorems on sequences. Let us start by the Storcesaro theorem. Very interesting this theorem. <clears throat> what uh, what is what it says? <clears throat> so <laughs> let a n and b n be two real. Sequences. We suppose that the n is positive, strictly positive, or or strictly negative without zero. This is the first condition, and we suppose also that the sum from k equal 1 to n of bn goes to plus infinity when n goes to plus infinity. If these conditions are satisfied, then, then, if the limit of a n divided by b n when n goes to plus infinity is equal to l, this implies that the limit of the two parcel sums a1 plus a2 plus a n divided by b1 plus b2 plus bn when n goes to plus infinity is equal to l the same limit as that uh, we find by dividing a and by the n and taking the limit this is a form we have a second form which is a a direct, which is a direct uh, application of this theorem. Corollary. Now, suppose that we have a n real sequence. We have b n real sequence. Uh, I prefer take xn and yn, and I will tell you why later. Let xn be a real number sequence, and let bn, yn be real number sequence but just here we suppose that is increasing and it goes to plus infinity or un is decreasing and goes to minus infinity when n goes to plus infinity if these simple conditions are verified then if the limit of xn minus xn minus 1 divided by un minus un minus 1 is equal to l when n goes to plus infinity this implies that the limit of xn divided by yn when n goes to plus infinity is equal to l the proof is very simple 
how we can get it just taking this formula and replace replace what we replace we take a n equal to x n minus x n minus 1 and a1 equal to x1 and bn equal to yn minus yn minus 1 and b1 equal to, to y and x1. Here we, we are in this situation, a and bn means this <coughs> and the limit if we replace here a1 by x1, a2 by x2 minus x1 and so on, they will be constant, we just keep x n divided by u. A straight application, a direct application. <clears throat> Next, this is very important. Actually, I am uploading a video. I am uploading a video on on uh, limit soup and limit and it will be in a few minutes online this is first so this is an, the arithmetic form of stores Cesaro theorem how about the geometric one Theorem or corollary corollary suppose that we have the sequence Xn which is which is positive if the limit xn is equal to n when n goes to plus infinity this implies this implies that the limit of the nth root of x1 x2 xn is equal to n when n goes to plus infinity why because 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 let us denote the n the nth root of x1 xn this gives us that the ln of the n is equal to to the sum of ln x1 plus ln xn and here and here we need to take star we cannot define it for zero divided by n ln xn goes to ln n why because ln is a continuous function so ln xn goes to ln L. This means that ln vn goes, this means that ln vn, this implies that ln vn goes to ln n. Here we use the arithmetic form of Storm's Cesaro theorem. And this is true. Why this is true? Because if if the n is equal to one, this verifies this verifies the Storm's Cesaro theorem. So the limit of x n divided by one goes to uh, to one uh, to x uh, to n. Here we take this is a special a special or particular case. We have x n the sequence, but we have the an 
with the sequence, but the n is equal to 1, the sum goes to plus infinity, it is positive, so all the condition, uh, the necessary conditions are uh, verified. And in this case, and in this case, what can we uh, deduce? We deduce that the limit of the m is equal to n. Also, we have uh, an auxiliary result, which is a Bayer application. This is the special case of Storz Cesaro. This case is when the n is equal to 1. If, uh, if the n is equal to 1, we will get the limit of xn divided by 1 if this is equal to n, when n goes to plus infinity. This implies that the limit of x1 plus 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 xn divided by 1 plus plus n times is equal to n1 and the, uh, the arithmetic form of Storz theorem. This is the geometric form of Storz theorem. What do we have next? Theorem. Suppose that xn, suppose that xn is a positive, is a positive sequence. If the limit of xn is the nth root if the nth root of xn goes to l when n goes to plus infinity, we have here three cases. <coughs> if l is less than 1 and greater than 0, for sure, because it is positive. In this case, we have the limit of un equal to 0 when n goes to plus infinity. If l is strictly greater than 1, in this case, we have the limit of u n uh, x n equal to plus infinity and if n is equal to one we cannot say anything this is not conclu uh, conclusive yeah this is not con con conclusive it is not conclusive how we can prove it? Suppose that this one is true. This means what? This means for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find a rank n of epsilon from n such that for all n greater than n of epsilon, we have <laughs> we have what? <laughs> we have the difference between less than epsilon. This means that this means that the nth root of xn is less than l plus epsilon and greater than l minus epsilon, but we can uh, we can simply take greater than or equal epsilon since this is a positive. We can take it in both cases, but this is uh, very nice and uh, enough. What else? If we suppose that L is less than 1, this implies that there exists a thousand epsilon greater than 0, such that what? Such that L plus epsilon is still less than, strictly less than 1, to be, um, to be um, condensed. Let us take epsilon, for example, equal to 1 minus L divided by 2. We suppose that L is less than 1. If we take epsilon, this is 
the possible things we have for all epsilon greater than zero. If we take this, what will we get? We will get L plus one minus L divided by two. This is equal to L plus one divided by two, which is strictly less than two divided by two, which is less. Than. So this is possible. Here, if we take off power N, we get Xn less than L plus epsilon power N, Less than zero. When n goes to plus infinity, since l plus epsilon is strictly less than one, this goes to zero, which means that uh, if if l is between one and zero, this means that the limit goes to zero. In the second case, when l is uh, greater than one. I had an eye on the video about limit sub and limit f. Uh, it's uploaded uh, up to to 80 percent. Uh, so, if l is greater than than one, we have all this result for L greater than 1, but here we, we don't need greater than, but we need just this side. This side is L minus epsilon. Once again, there exists epsilon such that what? Such that L minus epsilon is strictly greater than 1, and we can find more than 1,000. If we take power N, And since this is greater than this is greater than one, so this goes to plus infinity one and goes to plus infinity this means that goes to plus infinity. If L is equal to one, uh, here we have a very nice example, counter example, which means that it is not conclusive. This means that uh, everything can be can be happen. We know from uh, Previous exercise that the nth root of n goes to 1 when n goes to plus infinity. In this case, this is xn. In this case, xn goes to what? And xn goes to plus infinity. And we can take y index n is equal to 1 the nth root of n. This goes to 1 when n goes to plus infinity. But in this case, in this case, what we have, we have the nth root here. In this, in this case, the uh, xn here goes to zero. So we have two examples, but in the first case, it goes to l equal to one, but the sequence goes to plus infinity. In the case, uh, the second case, it goes to l, l equal to one, but the sequence goes to zero. This is very nice. So we have this theorem. What else? If if the limit of the positive sequence x n plus one divided by x n when n goes to plus infinity if this is equal to n this implies that the limit of the nth root of x n goes also to n how we can get it we can get it by denoting this as u n we know from the previous result that but what that if the limit of the positive sequence is equal to n when n goes to plus infinity. This implies that the limit of the nth root of u1 times 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 un, un goes also to l when n goes to plus infinity. How we can use this result to prove this one without uh, without difficulties? We can write 
you can write x and you can write and x and this is equal to x and times x two divided by x one times 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 x and divided by x and minus one and here we take x1 so what we have we have x1 it will be constant with, with x1 x2 with x2 and so on this is y1 y2 we define y1 equal to x1 y2 equal to x2 divided by x1 and so on y and x n is equal to x n divided by x n minus 1 in this case we can take we can take here divided by x n plus 1 divided by x n and here we take x x1 plus 1 is the same So, so, <laughs> if the limit of u n is equal to one, this implies using this theorem that the limit of the nth plus one root of x n plus one, which is we have here n plus one element, one, two, n plus one element. This goes, this goes to, this goes to L. But actually, actually, this is exactly the N, N plus 1 of X, N plus 1. This means what? This means, the, this means that if U, N goes to L, so the Nth root of X, N goes to L, uh, this is the same thing. This is the, it's the same thing we have equivalent. This is a proof that if x n plus one divided by x n goes to l, this means that the nth, the, the nth root of x n goes to l. We have another way which is a direct one. So we use epsilon, the rank, and we take uh, inequalities and we can prove it. But I prefer this because it is. A little bit smart way to answer this question. What do we have? I think that uh, this is the uh, most uh, important theorem, a little bit advanced concerning the, the sequences. Last thing, if we have the limit of x n equal to n, one n goes to plus infinity. Here we have an equivalent relation. This is equivalent to uh, this is equivalent to the limit of x for k plus one for k equal to n. One k go, goes to plus infinity and the limit of x for k plus 1 equals to l when k goes to plus infinity the limit of x for k plus 2 equals to l when k goes to plus infinity and the limit of x for k plus 3 equals to l when k goes to plus infinity and and and, and the same time so certainly you can understand the, the trick if the limit goes to L, this means that all the subsequences goes to the same limit. Do we have the inverse? Do we have equivalence? Yeah, we have equivalence in 1000 uh, cases. The, the unique condition that the union of the index, the index should make N, should make N, and then we have a partition, the partition of N. Here N is equal 
to the union on K of uh, on is for K union for K plus one union for K plus two union for K plus three. The intersection is equal to an empty set, but the union is exactly equal to n. If this condition uh, is satisfied, then the, the convergence of the sep sequence sequences implies the convergence of the, the, the main sequence. This ends this video. I hope it will be benefit for you. Thank you very much. See you next time.